Princess Catherine making a welcome, though we're told temporary, return to public life this weekend in her first royal appearance since Christmas amid her fight against cancer. She appeared with her children to support King Charles and the Trooping of the Color. The 260-year-old official ceremony celebrates the monarch's birthday each summer, no matter when their actual birthday falls on the calendar. I keep forgetting he's king now. All right, former Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison's out with a new book detailing his toughest challenges while in office. In Plans for Your Good, a Prime Minister's Testimony of God's Faithfulness, Morrison gets real about seeking help for his mental health and how his faith steadied him then and does now. It's our Sunday special. You talk so openly and personally about your faith. Um, some people almost seem sort of offended like that. They don't get it when you talk about praying and that you talk to God, um, especially for somebody who's been a world leader. Yeah. They can't make sense of how that could be your life. Well, I think when you write a book, when you're a former politician, people expect it to be about politics. And uh, I deliberately didn't want to do that because politics wasn't my life. My faith is and my family is. I, I just wanted to share how God sustained me over this period of my life and not just then, but uh, throughout the course of my life and, and to share some lessons from that and hopefully some encouragement um, for those who, who have faith of their own, but, but perhaps have questions about it. And, uh, and hopefully that, that will be the result. And you talk about how stepping into things that mm. you're unsure of or that seem impossible to you, mm. like becoming the prime minister, <laughs> because of your faith, you felt led to go where God was calling you. Not that everything made sense or would be easy. I describe it as, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a prime minister, you're, you're a journalist, you, you run a small business, you're a teacher, whatever. Whatever walk of life we're in and we have a faith, then I, I believe you know, we are sustained, we are encouraged. And uh, in, in all of these things and the challenges that come our way, I mean, mm. your faith is personal. It's intended to be personal. Mm. And, uh, and that I think is the real, uh, the real advantage, the real benefit and blessing of, um, of talking about it in this way. Mm -hmm. And you do have to go back. Yeah. The deep dive of going back through reliving really difficult things, yeah. difficult times, COVID, um, dealing with China, all of those things. I think a leader in any in any walk of life and certainly as a country in what was the most challenging period Australia had faced since the Second World War and during in the wake of the Great Depression and when we had two prime ministers who died in office. It was that serious. And uh, so this was a pretty challenging time. When you're in the middle of it, you're very focused. You're, you're, you're solving the problems, you're making the decisions, and there is a, an adrenaline and, and a momentum which takes you from one to the other. But once the music stops and you sit down and you start reflecting on this, I mean, I think the emotional impact and a lot of the other things that was occurring at the time do wash over you. And that, that's an important part of your reflection. You also disclose that you were under such stress and anxiety at, at one point that you worked with a doctor with medication on that. Yeah. And I thought it was important to read what you said about this, um, that you ran hard at the challenges. You said what impacted you was the combination of pure physical exhaustion with the unrelenting and callous brutality of politics and media as uh, attacks. Mm. As a politician, I know this goes with the territory. It's not a complaint or even an, an accusation. It's just reality. Yeah. When we were going through all that and we were getting to that final point, you know, um, that wasn't the challenge. It was the pylon that would occur in the normal run of politics. And politics now has become very personal. It's not about who's got the better ideas to run the country often. It's, it, it gets down to a personality slanging match. And uh, pretty much now anything goes on that front. Oh, once upon a time, there used to be some guardrails for some civility in that. In the, in, the, in the social media age, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you, you, you struggle with that as, as a journalist, as many journalists I know. You've got to balance the, the clicks with the, with the content and, uh, and the integrity challenges that you have amongst that. I mean, it's, it's difficult for you guys as well. Well, and the way that you talked about this, it did feel so raw and so brutal. Mm. And I wonder if you think now that this kind of thing will keep good people or people of faith or wherever they're coming from, from considering you know, serving their country in some way. Well, I hope I hope it doesn't, um, but I think you've got to be open about it. You've got to really, I think, be committed to that t that life of service. It, it does cost a lot, but, you know, I, I don't regret it for a second. I, I had the opportunity to serve my country and to do some incredible things on behalf of my country, and, and uh, I'm pleased about that opportunity. But you know, it comes with working in a pretty brutal environment. So my encouragement to particularly say Christians, but not just Christians, but men, blokes as we call them in Australia, is, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with managing your health. Managing your physical health is as important as managing your mental health. Well, 
plans for your good. Scripture is woven through your faith. It's clear mm -hmm. that that has been your guiding North Star. Yeah. So it ends up being a very encouraging book and very interesting and informative looking back on those years too. So well, thank you for so. joining us. Well, thanks, Shannon. I, I particularly enjoy it. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.